Hello everyone, today we are going to continue with our level 3 chemistry, uh, the examination from 2019, the thermal chemistry 3.4 external paper. We are going to look at question 2 for this particular um, video. Alright, so let's get into it. So question 2. Um, first part the equation of the vaporization of the hex of hexane is given so you're going from liquid to gas and they're asking you if this is an exothermic or endothermic reaction so just remember you are breaking bonds you're going from a liquid to a gas so if you're going from solid to liquid or liquid to gas you are breaking bonds you are breaking the intermolecular forces between the particles um, so in this case you're breaking bonds and how do we break bonds you need to absorb energy so it's endothermic so that's pretty straightforward so, okay so if you want to have a look endothermic reaction because energy is required to break into molecular forces so that's nice and easy for a quick merit okay moving on now next one so if you haven't watched my hazardous law video um, please go watch that um, because i'm not gonna Go through this as thoroughly as i would because i already spent quite a bit of time doing hessel's law um so just um, search hessel's law in my channel then you should be able to find it this is a typical hessel's law question you've got three enthalpy combustions you need to be able to rewrite these um, you need to be able to translate these enthalpy combustions into the equations and um, i'm just going to do it right beside um, because this one is looking at enthalpy combustion of carbon so carbon burning in oxygen is going to give us CO2. Um, enthalpy combustion of hydrogen, I burn hydrogen, make oxygen, then I make water. Now, because this is the enthalpy of combustion of, carb, uh, of hydrogen, um, I have to keep that as one mole, so I can't change the coefficient in front of the H2. So that means to balance the equation, that has to be half O2. So these are my three equations. This is number one, number two, and number three just like mathematics solving simultaneous equation the equation on top this equation right here this reaction right here this is your equation that what you want to achieve at the end so what you want to do is say you want to manipulate these three equations um, so that they can combine to give you this equation at the very top okay so let's look at the let's look at these three things so we need six carbons on the left hand side which one of these three reactions have carbons um, just on its own which is right there so that's one carbon I need six carbons on the left hand side I already have one carbon on the left hand side so I need to use the equation number two multiplied by six so that's going to give me six carbon um, plus six O2 which gives me six CO2 remember your enthalpy value also multiplies as well so it's going to be 394 times 6 and um, which is going to be negative 2364 all right so that's done six carbons done i need seven hydrogens i only have one hydrogen here i need seven so i need to use reaction number three multiplied by seven which gives me seven h2 and 7 over 202 so everything is multiplied that by that number and negative 286 multiplied by oops multiplied by um, 7 which is going to give me negative 2002 all right so that's done as well i need one mole of c6h14 on the right hand side i have one mole of c6h14 on the left hand side so i reverse the first reaction so i can reverse number one so I put what's what was on the left now goes on the sorry what goes on what was on the right now goes on the left and what was on the left now goes on to the other side so I'm just copying and pasting so instead of negative four one six three it's going to be positive four one six three and just to check um, so we want six C's, seven H2's and C6 H14 and you can check now that everything else should cancel you have six H2, six, uh, six carbon dioxide, six carbon dioxide they are one is on the left hand side, one is on the right hand side, cancel each other out seven water, seven water, cancel each other out over here this is a combination of um, so seven divided by two that's 3.502 
that's 6O2, 6 plus 3.5 is 9.5 oxygen. I have 9.5 oxygen on the left and I have 9.5 oxygen on the right, so they cancel. Okay, so everything else has been cancelled. Um, the only thing that's left are these things highlighted. And what do we do now? Um, you just simply add up these three numbers that we just did, and then you can figure out the enthalpy of formation. The enthalpy of formation for C6H14, which is what the question has asked you to do, equals negative 203 kilojoules per mole. Okay, just add up the three numbers together, then you find the answer. Very easy for that. Um, very easy for an excellence. Make sure you round your number, your final answer to three significant figures. Um, we don't really say round to three SF in our questions, but because it's something that you've been learning since level two, we keep saying round to three SF, round to three SF. So your final answer must be rounded to three SF. No excuses. Okay, next one. Um, next one is a um, MC delta T type of question. Um, how can, how I can tell because you can you've been given uh, where's the, this this number here? So this is a typical what I call um, calculate enthalpy. So this is you, you can use Q equals MC delta T. So this is a very I mean I sometimes do this experiment with my year nines um, just to um, you know, for a bit of practical. Um, you, what you can do, you, you know, you can grab a pack of, like, say, bluebird chips, um, potato chips, and you can set it on fire using a Bunsen burner, and you can get 100 mils of water, and then measure the temperature before, put the chip underneath a beaker, line it up, set the chip on fire, and let the flame heat up the water. And what's going to happen, the water temperature will obviously go up, and once the chip has been completely burned, you measure how high the temperature went up with. So you use a temperature difference multiplied by the number I highlighted, which is the specific heat capacity, and then multiply by the amount of water you have, then you can know how much energy that your chip has released, okay? So the specific heat capacity of water, this means uh, 4.18, if you look at the unit, the lo unit looks really intimidating, but what it means is, is that if you have, if you want to increase one gram of water, by one degree Celsius, you need 4.18 joules of energy. That's what the specific heat capacity means, okay? It's always been given to you. So that's th that number there, that's C, uh, that 4.18 is, is for C, okay? Um, this M, this is a mass of water, okay? This is a mass of water. It is whatever mass what is is this thing? Whatever you're trying to whatever you're trying to heat up. Now sometimes they don't use water. Sometimes I may give you like say if I put 50 mils of sodium hydroxide and 50 mils of um, HCl together, and then the temperature went up. Da da. And then you can look. You can go. Hold on a sec. I actually don't have water. But then you have 50 mils of sodium hydroxide. You have 50 mils of HCl. Then you have 100 mils of liquid. So that's the mass, okay? So the mass, that this, this particular M always stands for the amount of things in your beaker that you're trying to heat up, okay? And then T stands for change of temperature. So it's the final temperature minus initial temperature, okay? So once you know how to use that, the calculation is actually really easy. You can see I didn't even read, I didn't even read that stuff, okay? Because I just look for numbers. Um, a lot of people get confused with this grams. This grams is not this mass, all right? So just remember this, we'll need to use that number later, but this mass is the amount of water, okay? It just is that one. So let's calculate it. So, um, and by the way, we are roughly estimate one mil equals one gram. Okay, so right now they give us 400 grams already. They don't have to give you 400 grams. They could have given you 400 mils, which is equivalent to 400 grams. Okay, so it's 400 times 4.18 times a change of temperature. Remind, remember, it's the final temperature minus the initial temperature. You don't always get a positive number. It depends on the experiment. That For this type of experiment, it's always going to be um, increasing temperature because you're heating it, okay? but So I've used the 400 grams. I've used the 20.5 degrees. I've used the 36.7 uh, 36 degrees. I've used the 4.18 joules per grams per degree Celsius to calculate Q. So what is Q? Q is the amount of energy that has been um, released to 
make this amount of water, this much water to go up by 16.2 degrees, which is that minus that. Okay, so this is going to give me 27086 joules. Because remember, this is the mass is measured in grams. This C is given, and then the Q is actually measured in joules. Um, we don't really like joules, we like kilojoules because all of our enthalpies are measured in kilojoules per mole. So this is going to be 27.06, oops, um, 27086 kilojoules. I mean, you can round to 3SF here. Um, but if you did round, let's say if you rounded to 27.1 kilojoules, um, make sure you use the entire number in your calculation. Don't round, don't round and use that. Okay, that's not a good practice. Now, so if you can do this, you already got at least an achieve because one step is achieved. Um, and then you, this is where um, it's really useful hint for you guys when you do calculation chemistry, in especially in high school. All the numbers we give you, you tend to need them. Okay, and this is something I always told my guys. If you see something in grams, that's a chemical. Grams are useless to us. We want to convert the grams in moles. Okay, so this is where we need to use this other equation. How do we find the enthalpy? Enthalpy, enthalpy, um, the enthalpy change is you um, calculated by the negative Q. So the number that we just calculated divided by the mole of chemical that we use to make this reaction happen. So what is the chemical that we use? We used this thing, which is a hexane burner, which is C6H14. And then how do we figure out mole? Mole is uh, small m divided by big M. So what is the mass? This is where that mass comes in. This is 5.22 divided by the molar mass. You see every single number that we have seen on this particular question has been used once, okay? Um, you never need to double up on the numbers really, okay? Um, you, you could, I'm not saying you never get those questions, but those questions tend to be much harder. Um, and probably only for scholarship, I never seen them for NCA, um, for the normal standard questions, but who knows? Um, but the molar mass is given to you as well, so it's 86.0 gram, um, grams per mole. If you do that, you get 0. Point, oops, why did I write down there? That's going to give you 0. 0.0607 moles. And then we're going to go back into this equation and just substitute numbers. The enthalpy is going to be negative 27.086 divided by 0 0.067, because the Q is that number, um, and you should get negative 446. Don't forget the unit, enthalpy change is always measured in kilojoules per mole. Okay, very standard sort of question, MC delta T, and then negative Q divided by the mole. So you need to figure out, if you, if you, um, you need to be able to do at least one or two steps of calculation and this is where it really annoys me to see people leaving this section blank um, if you see grams of something like of the chemical you can and then you see the molar mass you can always convert that to mole that's one step of calculation and then i'm pretty sure the q equals mc delta equations has been given um, to you now in the resource sheet so you can just look for numbers m you know that's it really comes down just to find the numbers put in the equation and do it i mean if you are someone that do really well in calculus and stats this is much easier than that. You just need to know which number to use. And like I pointed out, all the numbers you need to use um, just once, all right? Next one, last one for this section. Um, explain why the experimental value obtained from C is less negative. So what it means is that if you compare the two values, the theoretical value is negative 4163. What do we get? We get negative 446 kilojoules per mole. So this is what we calculated from the experiment, which is about 10 times less than the theoretical value. So why is that? So you need to look at the experiment uh, and you should be able to see that this isn't exactly not a very well designed practical because you're not, not all of the heat, not all of the heat is heating the beaker. You are definitely gonna get some heat. Um, that will be lost to the surrounding environment. And then the definition of um, enthalpy change is you have to do this experiment at standard condition. So in summary, this is a very straightforward um, 
mirror equation so you just identify it because you lose heat to the surrounding so you not all of the energy has been gone into the uh, into the water to heat them up um, so you can talk about incomplete combustion you can talk about um, the tripods or whatnot absorb heat. you can talk about not dying standard condition and then the explanation is that you have less energy transfer to water okay so that means you will get a lower measurement as you would if you were to do this properly okay but um, um, if I think the most difficult part of this particular section is the Hess's law question or the MC delta T um, but like I said the Hess's law question already done in my uh, in one of my previous previous videos if you want a more thorough explanation you can go to that but other than otherwise um, and I'll see you guys next time bye bye